Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We come to give God the glory. We come to give Him the praise. Hallelujah. Because He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. And we come to celebrate. Amen. We come to praise the Lord for what He has given us. Amen. He has given us this awesome man of God. Amen. With this awesome woman of God right beside us. And we just bless the Lord for them all today. We come to celebrate them. Yeah. Amen. Because they have stood, amen, the test of time. Yeah. Amen. They have stood, amen, when things were rocky, when things were going all kinds of ways, they have stood. Hallelujah. Down for 24 years. Hallelujah. We give God the glory, we give God the praise because so many gave up, so many gave in, amen, but yet they're still standing. Yeah. Hallelujah. We celebrate you on this day. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know that it hasn't always been easy. Amen. Because we, amen, and members and friends and those that, that are under your leadership, sometimes we don't, amen, act right. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we don't act right. Amen. But we thank and praise the Lord that, amen, he kept you and, amen, he kept you in a, in a place where, Amen. When we needed to be chastised, amen, you were right there to do it. Amen. Because that showed that you love us. Amen. And we just say thank you on this day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to have an opening selection, amen, by Mount Holly Praise Team. Amen. Amen. Put our hands together. Amen.
Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Amen. His hands won't get weak. Amen. His hands won't drop. Hallelujah. So hold to God's unchanging hand. Because our friends may let us down. Yeah. Loved ones may let us down. Yeah. Amen. But if we hold to God's unchanging hands, yeah. He'll never let us down. Yeah. Amen. We can lean on Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hold to His hands. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this time I'm going to have a scripture by Sister Elaine Quinones. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
when I look back over my life and I realize how he has brought me through. Amen. I owe him a prayer. We owe him a prayer. Hallelujah. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, we owe him a prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for this wonderful praise team. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a welcome address by Sister Pam Shepherd. Amen. And following the welcome, we're going to ask someone to come and respond to the welcome. Amen. Another set collection by the choir. 
Another Amen. session. Amen. Amen. So oh. 
in the place. Amen. Amen. Blessed quietness. Holy quietness. What assurance. Amen. It's good when you have that blessed assurance. Hallelujah. Amen. We can count on Jesus. Amen. When everything else is failing. Amen. We can count on Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed quietness. Amen. Thank y'all for taking me back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Songs that I grew up on. Amen. Yeah, right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's still an exciting time because it's, it's offering time. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Amen. Press down, shaking together and running over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And it's in the hands of the ushers. Amen. Hallelujah.
blessing, amen, that we're able to, to get him to come today. Uh, the preacher that was supposed to preach ended up getting sick and wasn't able to come. And when I called on Pastor Alderman, he said he would do it. Amen. 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 Give God the glory and the praise. Amen. And um, at this time, it's gonna, we're going to have co-pastor Gloria Alderman, amen, come and introduce her husband. After which, the praise team will go to sing and take us a little high. Amen.
I get started. Put that on my heart to say this before we start the service. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now for Pastor Echo, who will probably stand here this morning in this hour. But two to the attack or the sickness will come upon him at the last moment. We call him not to be here. But I am agreed with the rest of this church family that you speak of speedy recover upon his body. That he be up and about doing your work. Right, son. We thank you right now. Because that nothing is possible with you. But man, they might say it's possible. God, all things are possible. And we give you the honor. And we give you glory. For giving him a speedy recovery. We give you the honor and glory of Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Things happen in life beyond our control. But I tell you what, it's best that you be prepared for the change when it comes. Giving honor to our former pastor who we've known over 25 years. He might be a few years younger than me, but he had no He was my pastor one time. And he's my brother in the ministry. When I need something, or we need something, he can do it, he'll do it. And we're going to talk about the heart today. Amen. I want to thank Reverend Johnson for calling me. I thought he was another Reverend Johnson. But nevertheless, I thank God for him calling me and asking I would come at the last moment. The Bible teaches us that you must always be ready. Amen. We call no man know the moment or the hour that we're going to depart from this world. I want to first say if Brother D could have been here, didn't have a previous engagement, Brother Richard, he would have been here. But he was church this morning, he had a previous engagement. And I want to thank this uh, made up praise team. <laughs> God for my darling wife for 52 years I said. She has been my strength. And encourage you, cheerleader. And Pastor Phil, you know, you might not know this, I'm not a savings, but they were prophesied back in 78 we're going to be the ministry together. And uh, on war, you Paul Roberts University camp with my two white ladies. And, and she keep looking at me and said, I'm waiting for you. I said, I'm waiting. <laughs> but she would not accept the call into the ministry until I did it first. And so I just thank God for her and for her encouragement. And, and I want to thank my Holly once again for breaking their afternoon. <laughs> to help us accept this engagement. Because, like I said earlier, life happens, and you don't know what's going to take place. And Pastor Pittman, before I go into the word, you have some commitment. Like the first lady said earlier, that uh, you guys been there for us and for yes, with sir. us. And when you were staying up uh, off in uh, North Carolina, uh, 
up there near uh, in that apartment complex, and, and God moved you guys to Virgo, and then and you guys were accepted here at this pastor. We still talk and we communicate and we fellowship, and we have never lost contact from day one. And Sister Greg, I see you back there, our cousin. <laughs> She always support the call. And I thank God for it because. If anyone else I overlooked or forgot, shot it to my heart, not to my head. Oh, my heart forget, but he don't forget the right and wrong done. <laughs> Today, in honor of our pastor, I know he not under his covering now, but he was my pastor one time, that's why I say our pastor. Amen. And let me get the scriptures out of the way first before I forget about it. Be coming from a few places in the Bible, the book of Psalms, the verse uh, chapter 39 4, excuse me, 37 4, Psalm 37 4. He cleared it, ask please. I'm just going to do one scripture at a time. Psalm 37, 4. He please ask, he please ask, I messed it up again. He please ask please. Three, prayer. The book of. Now. <laughs> they also 
are called to have a heart for God mm -hmm. and be servant to all. Okay? Is this Pastor Pittman or not? <laughs> this means that their pastor must always have a heart for God and be willing to sacrifice serving others. The Bible teaches that a pastor ought to be filled with love and compassion. Are we talking about my brother? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Over, over be uh, the most important of the pastor heart. He, he sees things. God presents things to him because he has Christ in his heart and so the pastor heart is making preparation to do what God has commanded him to do in his heart about the people that God has placed him over. The pastor have a very important robe in the shirt. They are also called to be an example for Christ to their congregation. The Bible says that a pastor heart should be filled with love and compassion again. It keep talking about love and compassion that a pastor should have for the church and the congregation that God have placed them in charge of. They should always be willing to sacrifice serving their congregation. And I know some of the things that you go through as being a pastor, and I just know my brother does pray hard for God to give him the right instruction for the people that God have placed him in charge of. What does the Bible say about the preacher heart again? And we look, the pastor have a heart for God and his people. And the Bible says that the pastor heart should be filled once again with compassion and mercy. There you go. This means that the pastor should have deep love for God and the concern for the people in his congregation, the pastor heart should always be filled with love and kindness. When, when, when you see a pastor who does not care about the congregation, that he care about himself and everything he can get from him, uh, that pastor is not after God's heart. Right. That, that pastor is after his own unselfish gain. And, and, and God knows how to deal with pastors who do not obey his strict order. Yes, how he should be and how he should direct his people because everybody belong to God, good or bad. Yes. When God allow a group of people to select you as their leader who is called their pastor, God expect that person to do what God requires him to do to be the best that he can be for the people who he put in charge of. Pastor have a heart that is open to God and his people. Amen. He are willing to sacrifice serving others and are committed to help helping people grow in their relationship with God. Yes, this is the heart of Pastor Pitt. Yes, the church said, the church said, the Bible said, <laughs> the Bible said that a pastor heart is to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humble before God. God I'm a, that song, you can find that in Psalm 37 4. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't give the other script when I went flying by. But nevertheless, these qualifications are existing word for anyone and everyone who wants to serve God and his people faithfully. 
and, 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 and we as, as pastors, it's, it's not hard. It's easy if you allow God to direct you. Amen. The hard part is that we pastor, we want to do things our way and not God's way. A, a, a lot of time, lay people don't understand the task and the direction that God placed upon pastor to do certain things. But all I ask that you today and the people from Mount Holly also, I'm talking to myself, that when God direct you a certain path, just flow with it. Yes, sir. Just flow with yes, it and sir. don't knock it. Yes, sir. Because if it if it not God, it's not going. There you go. Amen. It will not work. Amen. But of God, He will allow it to work. Because God don't make anything. He allowed it to happen. Yes, sir. And, and God can do anything he want to do because he is God. Yes, sir. But I tell you what, God not going to allow us to do nothing that's going to hurt us. He's not, so. he not going to do nothing that lies hurt. Whatever God allow happen to us is for our good. Yes, sir. And all the bad things that happen to us because we got out of the will of God. You need to tell the truth. So compassion. Pastor, have a heart of compassion. And am I talking about Pastor Pittman or not? Yes. The Bible says that a pastor heart should be full of compassion and kindness. That's once again back in Ephesians. Prayer, uh, pre-prayer. And this means that a pastor should be kind and compassion to others. And I know my brother do not be harsh unless the Spirit is telling him to uh, give you a message of correction. Amen. Other than that, he passionate. He kind. And he is gentle. Yes, sir. Over the 25 plus years I've known this young man, him and I had never had a falling out. We have never had harsh words since each other. It's always encouraging word. Yes, sir. No matter what happened, he always encouraged me and I encouraged him. So I just thank God for the friendship and relationship we had over the years. And get back to the, the, the compassion for others, even when he do not, even when they do not deserve it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sometimes. We as pastor have to be kind. Well, because if you don't be kind to someone who be harsh to you, it will travel a lot faster than you being kind to everyone. Amen. Let the pastor start using bad words, start slanting like a hard-headed, disobedient Christian. He will get out there doing chapters of the news and he will get out there. Talking bad about pastor getting the man. That's why I say when they don't deserve it, you gotta be kind to them. Why? Because you're the pastor. And you have to be particular how you address everyone. Pastors should also be compassionate toward them, even when they don't deserve it. They should be honored and seek God guiding in everything they do. Yes, sir. In everything yes, they do. Yes, sir. The humble, the humility of a pastor. Right, a pastor have a heart of humility, of humbleness. The Bible says that a pastor heart should always be full of compassion and kindness. That's still back in Ephesians again. It's Crail, our third chapter, Crail first. And when we look at all the things that a pastor is required to do according to us, the Bible, we should always be willing to assist our pastor in things that 
when it seems like going wrong, it can go right if you just allow God to direct you. Amen. Amen. Stephan is pastors should have the unique opportunity to be selfless and serve others. Yes, In other words, don't think about self. Yes, sir. Deny his self Amen. in order to serve us. Yes, the Bible says that once again that a heart should be full of compassion and mercy. Yes, he keeps repeating that again in Ephesians 3 prayer about the heart of a pastor should have that compassion, should have the mercy. Yes. The example of a pastor heart in the Bible is the pastor, the pastor have a heart of God and his people. The pastors speak highly. Uh, the Bible speaks highly of a pastor who heart for God and his people. In fact, the Bible says that a pastor heart should be like the fountain of water that gushes forth abundantly. And you can find that in Proverbs 7, 27, 17. This means that a pastor is always willing, willing to help others and always willing to serve uh, to share God's love yes, with sir. others. When, yes, when, when, when you look at what I just read about the pastor serving in heaven, when I came in the dining room, who gave me some water? Who asked y'all want something to drink? The pastor. Yes, sir. He was right there in the cooler, getting the water, shaking the ice and the water all over. <laughs> so I could have something to drink. Right there in the kitchen, this afternoon, yes, serving, just like the rest of the room. And, and, and that's why I thank God that y'all hear this. Because every time, not today, but every time I came down here, that young man be in there serving in the kitchen just like the rest. He don't sit back behind the desk and say, y'all go do this, y'all go do that. He's right there in the kitchen. Amen. 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 The pastor had a heart for God and his people. He are called to be a servant for all and to love God with all their heart and soul. This means that the pastor must have a deep understanding of God's word and able to share it with others. He don't keep it to himself. Amen. Here is something Paul said. And Paul said this, the pastor have the heart of God and his people. The Bible says that the heart should be full of compassion and mercy, and he referred that back to Ephesians 3, prayer again. This means that the pastor always have a deep love for God and a concern for the people in his congregation. And they say that the pastor have a heart for God and his people. They are always serving. They are always, they are they are called to be servant for all. Yes, they are. Not part. See, see, let me pause it for a second. A lot of folks don't understand. A lot of folks criticize pastors and say they have pity. You can't have pity being a pastor. Amen. No I don't know where people get this from. <laughs> that pastor have pity. You cannot be a pastor of God having picked. <laughs> and that's what the author said that wrote this up, saying that a pastor love with all his heart. Yes, he and, does. and he served serving of all. All, all main word, one who got a million dollars, one who got a billion dollars, one who got one dollar. Yeah. Hey, hey. He loved them all the same. Amen. Hey, People have lopsided thinking about <laughs> pastor and what pastor does or don't do. Oh, yes. But I'm here to tell you that a pastor like Pastor Pitt, I thank God for him. Yes. Because he always been straightforward. Amen. Yes, sir. Sir, telling you the truth. Yes, Where it hurt you or help you. Yes. you tell yes. Yes, sir. And this is what made a pastor a good shepherd. How to cultivate a pastor heart. A pastor have a unique opportunity to impact the lives 
of their congregation in a powerful way. Yes, sir. It is important that they cultivate their heart that is open to God and will deserve will desire for their congregation. Yes, sir. And I know that Pastor Pitt have a desire for this congregation to grow yes, sir. and be not a spending law. Yes, sir. He teaches them yes, and he instructs them yes, the sir. right way. Amen. The Bible teaches that a pastor heart should be filled with love and compassion. And, and, and he is constantly repeating like he said over and over again. Trying to get it into you that a pastor have compassion yes, sir. and love for the people who God have placed them in charge of. Yes, and along with the rule, oh, 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 we God is we, we are him. We went out and did a certain move, you did. <laughs> God placed him here. Yes. That, that people get Christian. Yes. God would not place a good man in a place where he can't be used and be obedient to his word and not abuse his people. Yes, sir. So what all you concept you got thinking that we we hard him or we did that knowing that God placed him here. Yes, sir. He placed him for a season to do what God wants him to do to help these people and all people grow in the Lord. Amen. That's our desire. Yes, sir. This will help them to the sense of the need and their congregation to provide guidance and support. Yes, and I dare someone say he don't uh, do guidance and support here. I don't want to come here at all, but I know this man. Yes, sir. And I know his heart. Yes, sir. And I know that's what he do. Amen. So we take a uh, look at make sure I do the right one or don't again. Okay. <laughs> The prayer of a pastor heart. The pastor has a unique role in the church. He is called to shepherd the flock and to lead them in prayer. It is important that a pastor has a heart filled with love and compassion once again. The Bible says that the pastor heart should be filled with mercy and faith. You can find this in James 3, 17. I want to read what James 3, 17 says. He says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, and then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be enticed, full of mercy and of good faith, good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. You cannot be a, a effective pastor if you got a bunch of uh, partiality, partiality and hypocritical thought in your mind. Right, you can't do it right, because the Spirit of God would not allow you. Amen. And, uh, and I heard, I heard over my lifetime, oh, the pastor, he got pics, he got favoritism. You can't be an effective pastor of God having favoritism. Amen. You got to creep the millionaire in your congregation just like the one who, who work uh, on social security or on welfare. Amen. You got to creep them all the same. Don't God will hold both of us in, you know. All right. We have too much at stake in a position that a pastor have to show favoritism or partiality. You can't do it. God expect his pastors with a heart for his people to do what the Bible tell him to do. Not his own thing. We don't do our own thing, the song says. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Yeah, I've been singing that back in the day. <laughs> I still can't sing it. But nevertheless, you can't do what you want to do. It's not your thing. It's God's thing. All right. We've got to do our own thing according to God. No, God's going to hold us in comfort and condemnation for it. 
what? Yes, sir. We have, as pastors, for being one myself for 23 years, I know, without a shadow of doubt. You can't show partiality or favoritism. No, God wants your heart to be pure. Yes, does. Pastor have a heart for God and his people. They are called to be servants of all and to love God's people with their heart, with all their heart and soul. This is what makes a good pastor, a good shepherd. Yes, sir. Serving up. I'm almost finished. I got two more to go. <laughs> Serving up. Pastor. Have a heart to serve for serving others. The Bible says that a pastor heart to be like the heart of a lion. And that is in Proverbs 29 and 4. This means that a pastor should be strong and courageous and have the willingness to help others. The pastor have a heart for God and his people. They are called to love and care for their congregation. To lead them in worship and service. Yes, sir. The Bible teaches that a pastor's heart should be full of love and compassion. This author that I got this information from, he keep repeating over and over again about love and compassion. Amen. And when I when I was reading this, uh, since Brother Richard called me yesterday, and all, and the more I read, the more I thought about you, Brother Pastor. And and the more I thought about the love and the compassion that you have for the yes, church sir. that God has placed you here yes, for. Sir. It's a part of it. And I thank God for you. Yes, in summary, the pastor have a very important role in the church. They are called to lead. Once again, they are called to lead. They are called to lead. Yes, and the shepherd of the congregation, the Bible say, that's a pastor heart. When you allow a pastor to be pastor, the church will flourish. Yes, sir. What's wrong with some churches? If they are not allowing the pastor to have their role in the church. Yes, sir. So, Pastor Pitt, after knowing you for a little while, a little over a quarter of a century, I thank God. When I say a quarter of a century, that's been a long time, don't I? But it had been. <laughs> Honestly, I have enjoyed being with you, the time that we have fellowship, and, and, I, and I tell the truth that uh, you have really blessed us when I come out of our family yes, when you were when you were doing the shower. Yes, and uh, Sister Breeze and Cubs can testify that sitting back there too. Yes, sir. And uh, tell the crew we hate it that you left. Yes, sir. But we knew that God had greater work for you down here. And uh, child, I almost, I, I, I about to forget what church I read. <laughs> but I thank God that uh, we have been friends for uh, a good while. And uh, as Reverend Johnson called me yesterday, uh, I say, what? Wait a minute. And I say, okay. No, no. I ain't going to say let me pray about it. All right. I, I just say, uh, yes, I do. Yes, because, well, I because I tell you, God has ways of, yes, of doing things. Yes. And I had sort of announcement weeks ago about your anniversary and all. And I was trying to figure out a way how to come down here and at least show the face and then you go back. <laughs> but but nevertheless. But God, but I did not know I was going to be here like this, but God knows. 
But we continue to pray for the, the guest speaking for to be here and continue to pray for his uh, speedy recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we just thank God for the invite. And I want to thank God for my last minute call and making friends call. <laughs> And uh, I just want to thank God for this opportunity. And uh, I pray that I say a little something here today that would instill someone to continue to show appreciation to your pastor. Yes, sir. Because he deserved it. Yes, and I thank God for him. Because it is no, uh, nothing happened by accident. And I, I tell you that uh, when when you see a person on the street go to his house and, and visit with him and and all and uh, fellowship as brothers without the title. Yes, sir. And he creeped me just like one of his brothers, a blood brother. I put it that way. Yes, sir. And I just thank God for the relationship that we had, one for the other. When, when you use the word relationship, people think that, oh, you're going together somewhere with somebody. But relationship is the fellowship that you have with each other. And, and, and we have a relationship that we can talk to each other about anything. We talk to, he talked to, uh, we talk about our children. We talk about helping our children advance in life. And, 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 and they get in trouble, they do different things. Yes, sir. And we talk about how can we do different things to help them ease their mind about what over the end. And this is what I'm talking about, the relationship that, that we had over the years. And I just thank God that we knew each other before uh, you guys got him as your pastor. And he was up there with us. But I thank God for him. My memory sure served me right. I was sure it was the first church you ever passed right out of college, uh, right? I said, I thought so. And I just thank God. And we had, uh, you mind my ability, but I'm going to tell you now. And Sister Bree, the witness. We had some opposition about you coming there because some of the members say that you were too young, you should have been Pastor Sherman. Don't be no other no Pastor Sherman, folks. We had some issues. But thank you to God. God. Right, Sister Bree? Right. <laughs> See, I'm not making it up. But we got you. We thank God we had you for a little while. But nevertheless, thank God for you. May God speed and continue to stay here as long as God allow you to stay here. Amen. To a right to a <laughs> before, uh, before we cut the honoree or lose, I'm always been taught that uh, whatever service you have, uh, you should always offer discipleship. Amen. Might be someone in the midst that don't know Jesus and the Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord. Before I go to the part, I want to pause for a second. Do people don't realize the Bible says about the parish time and the end of time. Yes, and things started back in 18 and 19 with the pandemic. And this is I talking. And I say the, the disease that they made up is COVID is a bad boy. And the reason I said because the bad boy ended up flu. You ain't hear nothing about flu called COVID ended up. <laughs> this is not the But <laughs> I don't think that's free for me. I but but I'm, I'm trying to say people allow things to get in their way of serving God. Yeah. And, and, and the Bible speaks about walls and rumors of walls yes. and family and, and things taking place and all. 
And the more the vow is being fulfilled, yes. the more credit your people get. Yes. And so it is my task to Emma invite you for uh, give the invitation to anyone on the sound of my voice who don't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior. In this world of all type virus and all type crazy people shooting up people and poisoning people and doing all kind of crazy things and wolves and rumors of wolves. Do you guys realize that we are sitting on a close to a weapon of mass destruction? Are y'all aware of that? Where I retired from Duke Power, they got a nuclear power plant right down there in South Southport. Across the river from the nuclear power, power plant is Sunny Point. Sunny Point is the largest weapon depot in the United States. You got a nuclear plant where I live next to GE. They make nuclear stuff. There's enough destruction in this area to wrap this area right off the map. We walk around every day in the law that I, I don't need Jesus and I this and I that. You can lay down at night and wake up and where you go. But out of this world. There's a lot of destruction of mass destruction in this area. They fight the wars overseas. Up and down the road. Pay attention to what travel up and down the highways and byways. There is train crash that run up and down the city of Wilmington, across the river and stuff. A lot of them train crash and box cars do have explosion on them. They're running back and forth from Sunny Point to somewhere. What if that train would run off the track near your house? And you sitting around thinking that I got it made. I'm going to get up tomorrow and go to work and a crane or something else will come by, a truck will come by, carry an explosion and blow you in the house off the map. But yet, we walk around saying, I don't need Jesus. And all you got is left in one second. Because the Bible says, and the moment of bringing it out, God want to tell Jesus to come back. Right. When Jesus comes back, you not know, ready. You don't have time to say, "Lord, forgive me." Yeah. It takes you longer in a second to say, "Lord, forgive me." Yeah. That's how much time you got. How oh, about I don't need Jesus? You need Him. Yeah. Either one. So what is the path down a virgin? Oh. If you need Jesus, you must say, "Come up." The path that do not mind. For well, fact, right, he'll take over and lead you into the center of prayer. Yes, I know that man will do it. Yes, sir. If there one. Lord, I thank God for a safe house. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for the word. Amen. An awesome Amen. word. Amen. Thank the Lord for Pastor Owen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What an awesome word. Amen. Amen. And at this time, Amen, it's time for presentations. Amen. Presentations. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Evangelist Erling Johnson to come and Amen, take the lead on this part that serves, amen.
the saints. Praise the Lord. Let's the Lord. And praise God for that word from God, the heart of the past. Praise God. Praise God. And I thank the Lord that our pastor does have the heart of a pastor. You know, a lot of preachers are just that. Preachers. But it takes a man of God with a heart of a pastor to be a pastor. Praise God. To deal with God's people. Because we know that God's people can be hard to handle. Hard to handle. Praise God. Praise God. And um, it takes a fully committed man of God to be a pastor. To be a pastor. Praise God. Because the saints, like I said, hard to deal with. Hard to deal with. Because sometimes we think we know more than the man that God has put over us to show us, help show us the way. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to give presentations. All right. And um, praise God. When Pastor got up and he said, give honor to whom honor is due. And honor is due to our pastor. Praise God. For his 24 years. Based out of Pastor here at Shadow. I haven't been here the whole 24, but I've been here enough for, praise God, to receive some of that pastorship and those blessings sent through him by God. Yes, yes. All right. Now, the pastor's age spearheads the anniversary, but that's just it. We spearhead. The entire shallow church family participated. And I thank God for our church family. For our church family. Praise God. We might not act like it all the time, but we do appreciate it. Amen. We appreciate it. All right, and I think we're gonna start with yeah, presentations from the different auxiliaries. And just generally act like she's mighty anxious that are you ready to come up for the for the other <laughs> Church would like to thank you for 24 years of service to our church in our community. And then we and say, we celebrate you and thank you for all that you do to make our church the encouraging and faith-building place that it is. We love you, Pastor, and we thank God for giving us a man of great vision, wisdom, and faith. Happy anniversary. And this is from
that the choir did their part. Thank you, Amen. And, and, mm -hmm. amen. and we, we came together to, you know, to do what we were supposed to do. Because if, if she could you know, think about you while she's in the hospital, then you know, we, we need to get together and do what we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord, amen, for, for you and Sister Lippin, amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 She goes to be in, in support. 
Right. Now, I've been in, in, in church a long time. Grew up in, in the church. I'm an old lady now. And I've seen a lot of pastors and their wives. And I can truthfully say that she right there in support. Amen. In support. Amen. In support. Amen. Yes. When you see one, you see the other. Amen. about 
the weather up there. <laughs> so, so I, I'm so short, I gotta look up at it. <laughs> you know, but all in all, glad to be here, and I'm glad I missed the memo. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Because we love you so much. I'm always going out looking for flowers for her. Let her know that we love her. And we just hope that you, I know Pastor said that um, you, uh, you, you put one in the uh, garage and you came back a year later and it grew, grew even more. So hopefully that will do the same. Okay, we love you, Sister Ben.
and we heard the same thing that we so it's not just something to be said, it's something we need to take heed to. Um, I know Rick Holman said a lot of things a pastor's heart. Sometimes we take that as, oh, whatever. But if you, we really need to get to have the pastor's heart. I'm not saying that he's perfect. We none are. But if we would take the time out to get to know the man. Amen. The man. Amen. Maybe then we can put away all our isms, as pastors say, and our schisms. Yeah. Because we none do what.
church to love. Amen. Amen. I, I just give God the praise. St. Matthews, thank you for driving from Burgall down here today. We appreciate y'all. We had another church family that came and left uh, from Jacksonville, all the way from Jacksonville. True Vine was here. Their pastor couldn't be here, and they decided that they were going to come and represent for the church family. They had to leave, but we thank God for it. We thank God uh, for Pastor Taylor and Sister Taylor that came. We want to thank God for Pastor Smith and, and, and Brother Smith for being here. And thank you, Andrews. I want to thank God for Pastor Alderman and the church family. I promise that's going to take this moment, but I, I would be in trouble if I don't say thank you personally to everybody. Uh, to Minister Mars for the message on this morning that matched right up this yeah. There's some work that I that I know I gotta do. Some things that I gotta take care of. Because when it comes down to it, I've got to stand before God to give an account of everything that I've done, everything that I didn't do, everything that I said. The Bible said every idle word. Yeah. Every other word, everything that was uttered that I thought I got away with, God's keeping record. And he's not ready to jump on me and pounce on me, but he, he won't correction me. I'm not going to put nothing on you, he won't put it on me. I'm going to show you this. But to this church family, I love you. I give God praise. Yeah. The weapons of our warfare are not hard. So the mighty God to pull it down a stronghold, cast it down the imagination yes. in every hot thing. You do know that we're going to wrestle against each other, right? But we're going to move on. We, we love you. We thank God for you. Brother Tim, it's going to be all right, brothers. It's going to be all right. When you have, when you have a heart for your members, when God did something, your heart broken, but God is a keeper, as you said. Yes, yes, yes. We're we'll going to give it back to the presider. We're going to move on. Or is it me that we're going to give it back to the Reverend Alden? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for 24 years of Amen. acceptance and love. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just want to take this opportunity to personally thank Pastor Alden for accepting that last minute, spur of the moment call. Amen. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. A true friend, and we thank you and my colleague for receiving the call, for answering the call. Praise God. Praise God. Well, this was the last minute thing. When we just found out yesterday that Pastor was sick from because he's sick. And soon as that picture got the got the word, Reverend Johnson got the got the word. I don't know if you got your speed dial or what. But he passed the phone and then he said, said he said, Pastor Alden, you come. Yeah, I called him and he said he could come. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. It's all hard to lie to clear.
Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest abide, guide, and keep us until we see each other again on this side or in the air. In Jesus' name, let us all say together.